Then, of course, they came from the ordinary family background and the small German town. He is also a, a humble man who would rather have taught theology at a university than to be called to responsibilities at the Vatican. He moved to the Vatican in humble obedience to Pope John Paul II, and he never lost his humble approach. Frequently, when I was at Rome, I would see then Cardinal Ratzinger in St. Peter's Square, where he would where he would mingle with the people gathered while garbed in simple black cassock. There was no indication that he was a cardinal. Often he was drafted by a group to serve as their photographer. He did this willingly and with a generous smile. As far as the group were concerned, they had just been assisted by one of the local priests, and Cardinal Ratzinger was quite content to be part of that understanding. Some commentators at the time spoke about politics before and during the conclave. Pope Benedict is too humble a man to engage in such activity. His respect for the papacy would not have allowed him to demean it by such activity. He liked a pope at, age of, at the age of 78. Pope Benedict XVI could not have been expected to continue the hectic, scape, the hectic schedule of worldwide travel that allowed his predecessor, John Paul II, to log nearly 800,000 miles and visit 129 countries. But he brought his own talents to the papacy. He is a brilliant theologian and philosopher. I first met Cardinal Ratzinger over 20 years ago when I was working in the General Secretariat of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. And when I traveled to Rome in, in 2010 to receive the pallium, and again later for the Alimina that was last year, Pope Benedict recalled my days as General Secretary. Though a man who enjoys his privacy, Pope Benedict is unfailingly kind, hospitable, and welcoming. Ultimately, he is a very pastoral man. Oftentimes, terms such as paranoia or ultra-conservative conjure up images that fall short of reality. Pope Benedict is a man of deep faith, who wishes to voice the authentic teachings of Jesus, and wishes as well to help others to experience the joy, the peace, the fullness of life that Jesus promises to those who live by these truths. Pope Benedict is a humble, courageous man, who out of love for his people, the faithful shepherd, who out of love for his flock, stuck in the church and the world with the unprecedented announcement of February the 11th that he would renounce the papacy and retire to a life of prayer and study. As is often the case when our church makes headlines, rumors and speculation abound. In the midst of the media buzz and the inevitable prophecies of doom, our Holy Father's own humble, prayerful, humble, and generous spirit witnessed to the truth that he was, that he was to make a decision of great importance for the life of the church. In announcing his resignation, Pope Benedict has acted humbly and unselfishly for the good of the Church. That same spirit has characterized his entire life of service. By acknowledging the weakness of age and standing aside, Pope Benedict made room for the Holy Spirit to call forth in a new Pentecost the gifts that the Church and the world need to face these challenging times. His was a courageous choice. So while we may have questions and uncertainties as the church enters this time of transition, we can take courage as well. We know that Jesus is the true head of the church, and he has not left us alone. As the first reading taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel reassures us, thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. In the gospel today, Jesus speaks the words, I am the shepherd. And then he defines what it means to be a good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Pope Benedict has given his life in service to God and his church. In 2006, Pope Benedict wrote the following, the following words in his encyclical letter, Deus Caritas Est. These are times when the burden of me and our own limitations might tempt us to become discouraged. But, precise, but precisely then, we are called by the, we are helped by the knowledge that, in the end, we are only instruments in the Lord's hands. And this knowledge frees us from the presumption of thinking 
Thank you. 